I've been shooting with the Fujifilm X100F since it was first released in 2017. Its compact design and manual dials drew me to shoot with it, but more importantly, the convenience that this camera has because of its design led me to take so many photos with this camera. Whenever I look at this camera, I feel the urge to take photographs, and not a lot of cameras can do that in my opinion, but the X100F managed to. While using this camera, I feel like I blend into any environment I shoot in, and that's what I needed for an everyday street camera. The X100F is small enough that it's not a hassle to carry with me, and so it made it almost inexcusable to not have with me anytime I set foot out the door. You know, when I think of my experience shooting with this camera, I think of all the shots that I got simply because I had this camera on me. In street photography, you never know when a moment's going to happen. And so you raise the chances of getting a good photograph simply by carrying a camera with you more often. If this camera were twice the size and twice as heavy, I'd probably be less likely to carry it with me. More on the X100F's design, the X100F and its predecessors have manual dials to adjust shutter speed, ISO, and aperture, all of which add to an experience that's very similar to shooting analog. If you've ever shot analog before, you would know the benefit that slowing down can have on your photography. Despite its digital capabilities, this camera forced me to slow down, and it frustrated me at times because I wanted it to work faster, you know, its autofocus speed isn't very fast and didn't keep up with me uh, when I wanted to do a running gun kind of style street photography. And so I just naturally had to adjust to the slower pace that this camera likes. And honestly, I think it benefited my photography. The X100F manages to take the best of two worlds. You get the digital convenience, but also the analog experience. And I think that makes this one of the best cameras I've ever shot with. So why did I upgrade to the X100V then? You know, when I first heard that the X100V was going to be released, I figured not a lot was going to change just because this camera is like as perfect as could be for a camera. But somehow Fujifilm managed to make this camera even more perfect. When it comes to upgrading gear, I look to see if the improvements make the camera more functional and whether or not that new functionality is going to improve my shooting experience, ultimately leading me to take more photographs. And you know, the more photographs I take, the higher the chances I will be making better photographs. And so when I look at the X100V, I think it checks all those boxes. First and foremost, the X100V is now weather sealed. And that's huge for me because I love to shoot in the rain. Now you do need to add a filter to it to make it fully weather sealed. Shooting in the rain was something I just wasn't comfortable doing with the X100F. Um, maybe it's my post water malfunction trauma, but I have seen some people shoot with the X100F in those kind of conditions and their cameras failed. So I tried to avoid it as much as I could. Weather protection on this new model basically adds a whole new world of photography to me. Fujifilm made a pretty bold choice adding a tilt screen to the X100V. You know, this is a camera that's uh, cherished for its design. And so I was a little skeptical when they said they were going to be adding this to the new model. But Fujifilm did a pretty excellent job making the tilt screen as subtle as possible and really not make it have any effect to the overall design, which is important if you're going to add something like this to this camera. You know, the tilt screen is actually something I use a lot in street photography when I'm using my Sony. You know, raising a camera up to your eye, that can bring a lot of attention to you. So using the tilt screen, I can basically just look down and be a little incognito and not raise attention or ruin the moment that I wanna capture. So this adds to the bag of tricks I can use with this camera. Additionally, it's easier to compose low angle shots and that's something I like to do also in my street photography. The X100F has one of the best camera designs out there for a camera, but Fujifilm, they were able to perfect it even further. If there's one thing that annoyed me with the X100F's design, it would be the D-pad placement. 
The drive mode button is also there as well. And when I grip the camera, I sometimes hit that button unknowingly. And I'd miss shots because you know, I'd accidentally be in a timed interval when I <laughs> didn't know I was. But with the X100V, they got rid of the D-pad altogether. And now there's this clean open space where I can comfortably grip the camera and not have to worry about accidentally changing the settings. They also actually added even more grip here and that improves the ergonomics of this camera, which is nice. For those who use the D-pad and the programmable buttons there, uh, Fujifilm did make the back LCD now a touchscreen, so you can do touch gestures to basically do the same functions that you used to do with the D-pad. It's not the same tactile experience, um, but for me, I never really uh, programmed those buttons to do anything to begin with because I wanted to not increase the likelihood I'd accidentally switch my settings. Here are some more design comparisons between the two models. Now onto the new lens and sensor that I think a lot of people are probably raving about the most with the V. It's incredibly sharp, but I think sharpness alone at higher apertures, it's not enough for me to upgrade. What is worthy for me though is the improved sharpness at F2, which wasn't there to begin with with the X100F. At F2, images came out really soft and that made portraits not very appealing to do with that camera. but with the X100V, that changes. And that excites me because it makes this camera not only a great street photographer's camera, but also a pretty underrated portrait camera uh, when I want it to be. The sharper image at F2 and the improved sensor makes this camera more functional in low light conditions. It's not possible to shoot at night with the X100F. I actually did a POV video on this channel, so if you wanna check it out, links up here but the image quality does deteriorate a lot at higher ISOs. And you know, you're more likely going to be shooting at F2 uh, to get the most light in, but at F2, the quality is not as sharp. So that sharpness improvement at F2 with the V plus the new sensor, which allows you to shoot at higher ISOs at better quality, it makes this camera even more versatile than before. Looking at all these new additions, the X100V, to me, is worthy of an upgrade from the F. Now, do any of these changes make me directly take better photographs? No, they don't. But that's the case, really, with any camera upgrade. What these upgrades provide me is the ability to use this camera in new ways I couldn't before. And to me, that's worth it. The X100V strongly makes a case for being the only camera that I would ever need.